Hello everyone. So far we have created two identity providers in identity and access management console. One is for client VPN software. Another one is for VPN self-service portal. In the previous video, we have also created a self-signed server certificate, which will be needed later on in this video where we are going to create and configure client VPN endpoint. Basically, all the client VPN sessions will end at the client VPN endpoint and we will configure client VPN endpoint to manage and control all the client VPN sessions. In this video, we will create a client VPN endpoint and configure it to use the newly added IAM identity providers. We can then associate endpoint with a VPC and configure authorization rules to allow traffic into our VPC through the VPN endpoint. And then we will also set up a client VPN self-service portal while creating the VPN endpoint, right? So without further ado, let's start. What I'm going to do now, I will go to our very well-known VPC dashboard. And from here, if we go a little bit down, we can see something is called client VPN endpoints in the left panel. So click this VPN endpoints link and shortly you will be redirected to the page where you can create the client VPN endpoint, right? So let's click on that client VPN endpoint button. All right, so we will fill up all of them here. So let's give a name to this VPN endpoint. Let's say I'm giving a name called demo because it's just a demo, right? And also optionally, you can give a description to the VPN endpoint. I'll leave it as it is. Most important thing is you need to provide an IPv4 CIDR range from which client IP address will be allocated. Make sure this IPv4 CIDR range is not overlap with the IPv4 CIDR range from your VPC, right? So make sure they are unique. So let's say the one I want to use is this one, which is 172.16.0.0 slash 22, all right? So that means whenever a client tries to connect to our VPN endpoint, the client will get an IP address from this range, right? And this range is not overlapped with our VPC CIDR range, right? So that has to be ensured, right? And if I go a little bit down in the authentication information, I will choose the server certificate that I have created in the previous video. And then for authentication, we will use user-based authentication and we will use federate authentication, right? And then we need to choose the SAML provider ARN, which is basically AWS client VPN provider. And then we need to select the provider for self-service SAML, right? And to do that, I will choose the other one, all right? And if I go a little bit down, you can leave everything as it is. Most important thing is in VPC ID, we need to select our VPC, which will be associated with this VPN endpoint, right? So for my case, this is the VPC I'm targeting, all right? And also you have to choose the security group. I'm choosing the default one, but you can choose any other security group, but make sure the security group has all the necessary inbound and outbound traffic are defined, right? I will leave everything as it is. And another important thing that you need to make sure that you enable self-service portal, right? So that's all I want. And let's create the VPN endpoint, right? And shortly you will see the VPN endpoint has been created, but it says pending associate. That means this VPN has been created, but it but it's not associated yet with the VPC, right? So to do that, what we will do, we will go to target network association tab 
and let's associate our target network so let's choose the same VPC again and let's choose a subnet which will be used for this association right so I will choose one of our private subnet and let's click on this associate target network we can see the state of the association says associating so basically it will take some time to create the association right meanwhile what we will do we will add an authorization rules so basically authorization rules will define who can access through our VPN client all right and to do that what we will do we will click on add authorization rule and we will define the public internet that means whoever connected to the VPN they will get access to the public internet through VPN client right and also we can define who can get access to our VPN we can make it accessible for all or what we can do we can choose the second one which will allow access to users in a specific access group right so this group can be from active directory but it also can be from aws im identity center as well so remember we had created a group in im identity center called developer so we will copy the group id of developer and we will paste it here so let's go to aws identity center again let's open it in a new tab and then from left panel i will go to groups and then i will go to developer group and you can see the group id so i will copy that group id and i will paste it here as well and let's click on that add authorization rules all right so the authorization rules has been added if i go to authorization rules tab i can see it will take some time to create the authorizations all right so target network association is still in progress authorization rules also in progress and also behind the scene it creates a route table as well right so it's also in progress as well so basically it will take some time maybe five minutes to complete the whole vpn endpoint creation process so let's wait for a few more minutes and we will come back so client vpn endpoint has been successfully created and you can see the state says it's available now and if we go to target network associations you can see it's already associated we have authorization rules which are active and route table is also active so everything looks good now what we will do we will configure self service portal and to do that i will go to details tab and i will copy the self-service portal url and then i will go back to identity center which is known as aws sso i will go back to identity center and i will go back to applications from left panel and then i will click on the application that I have created long time back for self-service portal. So this is the one. So let's click this one and we need to configure a little bit. To do that, we will click on action, edit configuration. And if we go a little bit down, you can see there is something called application start URL, right? We will call, we will paste that URL here all right and let's save the changes right so that's all in this video in the next video we will see how to configure aws vpn client so that we can access our aws resources through vpn endpoints all right thank you